Hi everybody, it's time for episode number 12 of my tutorials about the Yocto project and Open Embedded on a Raspberry Pi 5. In the previous tutorials we talked about I2C, SPI and OneWire. Today we're gonna discuss how to use serial communication over UART. The required hardware for the demonstration in this video is Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer, an appropriate USB-C power supply and U-Block's Neo 6M GPS receiver on a breakout board. The star of this video and key component is U-Block's Neo 6M. This is a GPS module used for satellite navigation and positioning. It provides accurate location, speed and time data, which makes it useful for GPS tracking devices or projects with drones and robots. We're going to connect and wire the U-Block's new 6M GPS module to the Raspberry Pi over UART. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It is a hardware communication protocol that sends data one bit at a time without requiring a shared clock. It uses start and stop bits to frame the data. This way, it is simple and reliable for serial communication. Raspberry Pi 5 is very different from the previous models and versions of this single board computer. Now there is a dedicated UART connector between the two micro HDMI ports, which is used for the serial communication coming out of the bootloader and the kernel. My plan is to attach the GPS module using the UARTs available on the 40 pin header. For this purpose, I have to apply a couple of configurations through the config.txt file. This is a text based file used by the proprietary bootloader of Raspberry Pi in which I can apply certain configurations. I started this course about the Yocto project and open embedded on Raspberry Pi 5 using the long-term support release CarbGov back in January 2025, so these tutorials are incremental. In the meantime, I changed my build machine, but I've replicated the setup. So here I'm initializing the build environment, and after that I'm opening conf slash local.conf with my favorite text editor, Vim. I added additional configurations at the end of the existing loco.conf. The first line is enable underscore UART equals to one. This is something very specific for Meta Raspberry Pi community supported BSP layer. And as the name of the variable suggests, it enables the UART. The second line extends the existing value of variable RP underscore extra underscore config. This way, a new line with dt overlay equals to UART0 will be added to the config.txt file that's going to be generated by Bitbake. In the Linux ecosystem, we have the so-called device trees. This way, you can cross-compile a Linux kernel and run it on various different embedded Linux devices using the same system on a chip, but with different peripherals. For this purpose, we have device tree source code file, which is compiled with the device tree compiler, and as a result, we have device tree binaries, which are loaded alongside with the kernel by the bootloader. However, there is further abstraction. It's called device tree binary overlays. This is a small fragment that you can apply on top of the existing device tree. And in our case, we're going to use a device tree binary overlay to enable the UART zero on the 40 pin header of Raspberry Pi 5. After that, back in the local.conf, I've modified and extended the variable image underscore install by adding GPSD and GPS-utils. In the Yocto project and open embedded, this variable specifies the packages to install into an image. Apart from the hardware and the drivers, we need an application to read the GPS data. GPSD is an open source Linux user space daemon that collects the data from the GPS device and provides it to applications in standard format. GPSC uh, is a user space client tool that communicates with GPSD to query and display GPS data. Package GPS-utils provides CGPS, that's why we need it in our image. I saved all recent changes to local.conf and after that I've typed in bitbake core image base. As you know from the previous videos, core image base is a very minimal 
uh, image that we're using for the demonstrations in these tutorials. This is a console only image that provides all kernel modules and drivers to fully support the target device hardware, in our case Raspberry Pi 5. Even incremental build of the image takes some time, but thanks to the magic of modern technologies, I'll speed up this part of the video. I'm sure you're already familiar with all these steps related to the build procedure because we have been doing them in uh, all these tutorials so far. I waited Bitbake to complete all tasks and after that I used BMAP2 to copy the image to a microSD card. Let me share a few additional details to give you a brief idea how things work. Bitbake generates a specific version of config.txt file based on the recipes from layer meta raspberry pi. This version of config.txt file contains the required settings for enabling UART based on the variables that we set in local.conf. The proprietary Raspberry Pi bootloader reads the settings from config.txt file. This is something very specific for Raspberry Pi. I need just four wires to connect this GPS module to the 40 pin header of Raspberry Pi 5. However, to make things more interesting, I'll be using Anavi Gardening U hat. This is an open source hardware add on board that I have designed in KiCad. And you know from my previous tutorials about sensors and peripherals for Raspberry Pi 5 using the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Here are all hardware components on my desk. I also have the micro SD card on which I flashed core image base. The USB to UR dongle is for the serial communication between the Raspberry Pi 5 and the computer from which I'll be typing in some commands. At the beginning of the video, I added some configurations to local.conf in order to enable the device tree binary overlay for UR0 in the config.txt file for Raspberry Pi 5. So this way I'm enabling the UART communication on GPIO 14 and 15 which correspond to physical pins 8 and 10 on the 40 pin header of Raspberry Pi 5. The same two pins are wired on a dedicated connector on Anavik Gardening U hat. I used four wires to connect the breakout board of the GPS module to Anavik Gardening U hat. VCC of the GPS module goes to 3.3 volts and ground goes to ground. The tricky part is that the UR pins are crossed, so RX from the GPS module goes to TX on the Raspberry Pi 5 and TX on the GPS module goes to RX of the Raspberry Pi 5. Finally, I've attached uh, the USB to UR debug dongle to the dedicated connector between the two micro HDMI ports on Raspberry Pi 5. This way in this tutorial we'll have two separate UART serial communications. I know it could be a little bit confusing, so here are some additional notes how you should wire the new 6M0 GPS module to the Raspberry Pi 5. It operates at 3.3 volts and the important part about UART is that RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. This way the Raspberry Pi receives what the GPS module transmits and vice versa. It's show time. Let's do a quick demonstration and find out my exact position. The GPS module needs to connect to satellites in order to locate me, so it works better outdoors. Because of this, I have this logistically complicated setup on my very, very small terrace. My ThinkPad T14 Generation 1 is connected using USB to UART dongle to the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Raspberry Pi 5 is connected using UART from the 40 pin header to the GPS module. Over the serial communication between the Raspberry Pi 5 and the GPS module we have text based communication which is um, serialized according to the National Marine Electronics Association standard. Don't get too excited too fast, there are a few additional configurations that I have to do at runtime in order to configure GPSD and to locate my exact position. The Raspberry Pi has no monitor and a keyboard, so the way to access it is to use the USB to UART debug cable that I plugged on the dedicated UART connector between the two micro HDMI ports on Raspberry Pi 5. I connected this USB dongle to my laptop on which I'm using Ubuntu 24.04, so I opened a terminal, this is the GNOME terminal, and inside of it I've executed the screen command for serial communication between my laptop and the Raspberry Pi 5. 
core image base was booted on the Raspberry Pi 5 and I was able to log in as root without any password. Using the ls command I verified that we have slash dev slash tty ama0. This is the UART that corresponds to pins 8 and 10 or in other words GPIO 14 and 15. I wired the GPS module on these same pins. After that, using the vtext editor, I've opened slash atc slash default slash gpsd. This is a configuration file for gpsd and I've edited the line that starts with devices and I've typed in there the um, ur device or in other words slash dev slash tty ama0. Just editing the configuration is not enough, we need to load it. If you remember, at the very beginning, in uh, tutorial number one, I switched to systemd. So now I need to stop the systemd service for GPSD. One more thing that is super important in order to get the GPS module working. I've executed the stty command, which in Linux and Unix is used to view and change the terminal settings. Uh, so in this case, I've set the bolt rate to 9600. Now is the moment to mention and remind you that just like in all other tutorials, the exact steps are available at the description of the video. So you can have a look at them there and just do copy and paste if you're using the same hardware. Finally, I have to execute system control start GPSD. This command will start again the GPSD daemon that I've stopped to apply the additional configurations on the terminal settings. I run again system control but with the status argument to check the status of the GPSD service. It is running fine. So this means that now we can use CGPS and figure out my exact location. I've typed in CGPS with the argument dash S. This argument prevents CGPS from displaying the raw data coming from the daemon. CGPS has a really nice text user interface. On the left you can see the time, the position with latitude and longitude as well as the speed. And on the right you can see the list of satellites that have been detected. The whole setup is finally working so we can enjoy it from another point of view. Now you know my exact location. This is the curse of the demo. I live in the beautiful city of Plovdiv, Bulgaria. This is one of the oldest or probably the oldest living city in Europe. The city is famous for its hills. However, these hills are quite of a challenge for radio communication, especially in the city center where I live. This definitely affected my previous video about Meshtastic where I tried to establish communication between my home and my office. And now even with the GPS communication I'm having some slight problems. Although I see several satellites, CGPS is reporting data that is not very precise. For example, we're definitely not moving, but it's reporting um, speed of one kilometer per hour or something like that. Just keep in mind that GPS data isn't perfectly precise because signals can be delayed or distorted by the atmosphere, buildings, trees, in my case hills, and satellite geometry which introduces errors. In our smartphones we are using the so-called assisted GPS which improves location speed and accuracy by using cellular and internet data to assist the GPS satellites. To summarize, in this video I've demonstrated you how to use and enable serial communication over UART on Raspberry Pi 5 using the Yocto project and Open Embedded as well as the community maintained BSP layer Meta Raspberry Pi. There are a couple of very specific Raspberry Pi variables that are coming from Meta Raspberry Pi such as enable underscore UART and AirPi underscore extra underscore config. We used both of them to modify settings in the config.txt file. This is a text-based configuration file used by the proprietary Raspberry Pi bootloader. For the practical demonstration, I used the GPS module that was connected over UR to Raspberry Pi 5. So in Linux user space, I've included GPSD and CGPS. As you have seen, during the demonstration I manually edited the GPSD configuration file. However, if you're working on a real-world embedded Linux device, the proper way to do this is through a BB append file. 
This way, the right configuration file will be deployed as part of the image. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope now you know how to use UART on Raspberry Pi 5 with Meta Raspberry Pi. For the next video tutorial, I'm planning to cover Wayland and Western. Let me know in the comments below if you have any issues or ideas for next tutorials. Stay tuned for new videos. Hope to see you soon.